uh, in an effort to kind of spur some innovation, I wanted to share a particularly special technique uh, that I hold near and dear to my heart. One of the first photos I ever made that sort of elevated my career used a variation of this technique, but with the release of mirrorless cameras and mirrorless mounts, particularly the drop-in filter mounts that Canon has for their RF mounts, has made this technique so much easier. Now I shared last October to my supporters on Patreon a video and an article explaining exactly how I've been using a modified variable ND drop-in filter to create in-camera double exposures super consistently, super fast, and just overall way easier than it used to be. You can use the link in this video if you wanna watch the original video that I released that actually goes through the exact steps and tools that I use to cut the cardboard out and insert and glue everything together. I tried a variety of approaches before I landed on just a few tools that made it really easy to do. But at the end of the day, all you need is one of the RF EF mount adapters with the drop-in filters, and then you need a Canon branded or third-party branded variable ND filter to pop in. Why it's important to use a variable ND filter, you can actually glue a perfectly cut half circle of cardboard or whatever material you want. Cardboard seemed the thinnest and darkest, so it worked well. You can glue that to one half, one half of the variable ND filter and have complete free reign of movement. And this achieves a perfectly split blackout of half your frame wherever it lands. So I'll show you a quick demo. This works particularly well with a wider lens, but um, I've used it all the way up to a 50 millimeter focal length and it worked. I'll show you some examples in a second. So it's attached to the R3 right now, again, 24 millimeter. At 1.4, you still get some sort of blackout, but it's not perfectly down the middle. It's too close to the sensor for it to be exactly, but you can see as I stop down my aperture, the line of separation gets more and more defined. So essentially all you need to do is pop your camera into a multiple exposure mode. Only Nikon and Canon cameras support that, I think. I don't think Sony has that anymore. Take one picture with half the frame perfectly blacked out, rotate the blackout piece of cardboard, take another picture with a different background. Looks like I might have a small hair or something caught in there. Uh, you could actually do diagonal slices you could do horizontal slices, but I've played it safe so far with just vertical slices over and over. Here's a look at the original video and article that I wrote. Uh, this has links to everything you need uh, to do this. And then here are some example files in Lightroom. So I did this successfully a bunch of times last year. We got one here, day and night. Another one here, this is actually daytime with just a really dark contrasted background against the bright sky. Another one here, uh, this one, your choice of background really matters here. So I recommend as high contrast as possible, something really bright if you can on one side and really dark on the other. Uh, and the really mind bending kind of awesome thing about this technique being in camera versus trying to Photoshop it later. If you're shooting into the sun for one or both shots and you get a flare effect, that flare will actually bleed through from one frame to the other. So it creates a really mind-bending blend between them. So this is the raw file from the groom side. You can see uh, where it was blacked out. And this was made using a 50 millimeter lens. Let's see the specs here. This was made using a 50 millimeter lens stopped down to F14. I don't have the raw file from the bride side because with Canon cameras, the second frame of the double exposure, if you're just doing two exposures, writes into the actual raw file that you're getting. So that's really it. I actually, I've seen nobody else out there using the drop-in filters in this way. And I'm kind of shocked because I think there could be an entire market of special shapes of filters, maybe different cutouts of different colors and various geometric shapes with the assumption that they're going to be combined. So I'm really hopeful that someday some company that has more time and expertise on their hands than I have uh, will actually make a whole lineup of these filters. I haven't seen anybody else using them in this way and leveraging the multiple exposure feature, which is in pretty much every Canon camera, these make it incredibly easy to create. It might not matter to you that it's in camera or not, like you could sort of maybe get away with Photoshopping something like that together. But I find that giving myself the restriction of having any overall technique or overall effect being done in camera eliminates the infinite possibilities uh, that Photoshop might allow for so I can focus and be much more dialed in with what I'm creating on site. And it's just genuinely satisfying to look at the back of the camera and see something like a day night double exposure. It's just really exciting. And it's a much more fun way to shoot than using something like Photoshop, in my opinion. Again, just use the link in the description of this video to see everything you need. Also feel free to reach out in the comments or on my Instagram or wherever you want. And as always, thank you so much for your attention. I'll be back soon. Bye everyone.